It is hard to believe that July 1st will mark five years since today's guest signed with the Philadelphia Flyers for a second tour of duty in the city of brotherly love. Before that, he spent six seasons as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs, just narrowly missing the Jay Rosell era and lucky for him. Well, today it all comes full circle. Welcome to Leafs Morning Take, JVR, James Van Reensday. What's up, buddy? How are you? Good. Thanks for having me, guys. I think I uh, barely missed in Toronto and then barely in uh, in Philly too. So uh, I know it was the past a it, couple times. It was like you're avoiding me at all costs, is what it seemed like. <laughs> I got lots of buddies that played with you, though, man. I was talking to Nasty on the Flyers the other day. Yep. Lots going yep. on. Luke, he wants to know how you feel about uh, that trade one for one there uh, years later after you went for Luke Shen straight across. Yeah, you know, that was wild. I think um, I was kind of expecting to get moved. And obviously, I've been pretty close playing with Braden there um, in Philly. And then to get moved for his brother, uh, it was kind of that bittersweet thing. I'm a little bit, uh, for me, with some of the close buddies I had to leave. But obviously, happy for uh, for those guys to get to play together. And loved uh, my time of getting a chance to come uh, play in Toronto. So I'd say it worked out uh, well for both of us. Can you believe it's been five years, though, man? Like, it's crazy. I was just doing a bit of background and legwork, and obviously I remember your time as a Leaf, but I couldn't believe it's been five years. You signed a five-year contract with them, right? Yep, yeah, five years. Yeah, it's definitely flown by. I mean, uh, it's crazy. I feel like the, the more time you play, the, the faster the years seem to, to go by. So uh, it definitely seems like just yesterday I was uh, – making my decision and uh, trying to figure all these things out. And uh, yeah, here we are. And now that onto the, uh, onto the next uh, stage of my career. Yeah. Time's flying. You looks like you're going to peg off a thousand games here this season. What's uh, you think you'd get to that? Is it, did it, it looks like it happened quicker than you think you say. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, oh, that's obviously a, a nice uh, milestone to hit. I think it just kind of shows uh uh, your dedication to the game, things like that, the longevity you're able to create. And uh, again, I'm someone who uh, kind of loves to to really try to adapt uh, my game and work on different things to really uh, make sure that, that those things don't happen by accident. So I'm always trying to tinker with different things to, to get the most out of myself. And um, yeah, definitely uh, feel feel good for uh, for having that for having that amount of games uh, under my belt and. Um, yeah, excited uh, for the next stage and uh, what's, what will happen next. Here's a good question for you. Who has the tougher media, Toronto or Philadelphia? Rosie, you can chime in too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's a good question. I mean, um, I would say the sheer volume in Toronto definitely is, uh, is, the, is the difference. But uh, I remember particularly in my first, uh, first stint in Philly, um, there, was, uh, there was a good amount of uh, content. I don't know if controversy is the right word, but there was just some things that uh, that the pot would get stirred quite a bit, you could say. So uh, there was some of that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely a little bit different. There was a little bit of that uh, bite in Philadelphia for sure, but obviously there's a lot of uh, sheer numbers uh, covering uh, the Leafs, so uh, it's just a little bit different in that way. <laughs> Of course, of course, two big markets, no question. And now you're you're a free man. You can go to anywhere you want to go. What's uh, what's it look like for you moving forward? What are you looking to get? What kind of uh, as far as you know, city, atmosphere, team, all the rest of it? You're uh, haven't been a free agent in a little while now. Yeah, you know what I think. Just going into it, the the, the two most important things are uh, again finding a good fit. Obviously, a team that feels like they need what you bring to the table and. Uh, has a place for you to be able to contribute. And then ultimately, again, at this stage of my career, it's uh, being in a situation with a chance to win, hopefully. I mean, uh, I've had a, a taste of, uh, of being close my first year in the league, and that was seems crazy that it was like 14 years ago now. So, um, yeah, those are two things that will be huge as far as um, trying to, to figure things out uh, as free agency comes here shortly. And the unique thing about you, you've signed, what, three contracts in the NHL, and they're all with Philadelphia, right? All with Philadelphia. So I don't know if there's like a sign and trade again in my future here or what's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, no, they've all been with Philly. So uh, that's kind of uh, unique. I think David Perron had a run of that for a while, too, where he signed like four or five deals with uh, all with St. Louis. But he ended up playing on a, on a couple uh, different teams, obviously. So. No, it's pretty interesting, man. And it's, again, we, we reminisce on your times as a Maple Leaf. Um, you played with Phil Kessel. What, what was it like to see Kessel win yet another cup? That's three in his career now. Yeah, you know what? It's amazing. I mean, I couldn't be happier for him. Uh, I feel like uh, maybe now I feel like people understand him better, but he, I feel like at times he uh, was fairly misunderstood. But uh, just a great guy. 
uh, great teammate. He's uh, just uh, fun to be around, funny to be around more so. I mean, just uh, his voice, some of his antics, and some of his <laughs> comments are just uh, classic. So, uh, yeah, I was happy to, happy to see him uh, get another one there. Too funny. Well, with the coaching staff you've had in the last few years, too, with Tortorella and you've had Babcock before that, two of the more hard-nosed coaches for sure. I know Torts a little bit from, from back in the day and obviously a hard-nosed guy, but I always thought he was fair. What, uh, what have you noticed in your career as far as the coaching styles and how they've changed, how the players have changed, how that hard-nosed you know, approach to coaching, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. The new kids are a lot different to coach. And having those two, you know, they'd stand out as the most hard-nosed coaches in the last few years. What was your experience with them? Yeah, I think you said it. I've definitely noticed uh, an adjustment from uh, when I came in to, to now. I think it's just uh, mostly on just, like, how things are communicated and communication style. And there's probably a little bit more of a two-way street um, nowadays, which I think is good and healthy to – to have those things but uh yeah just speaking as far as uh, playing for torts uh this past year I, ha I had an experience playing for him at the world cup uh like seven years ago i think it wasn't like uh or you know really, i was like 2016. so i had a little bit of experience with them there obviously at a tournament like that it's a little bit different probably than playing for under a full season but uh yeah i had a, I had a great experience overall playing for him i think uh the thing i've the, the longer you play, I think the more you appreciate kind of that directness and, and honesty that you can get. I mean, sometimes it, it can be good, bad, or ugly, uh, depending on uh, how things are going. But I think just um, just having that uh, uh, piece of knowing where you stand is a, a good thing and what's expected of you. So I think uh, that's one of his uh, kind of strongest traits as far as uh, just, just being – blunt and fair and again the settings can change whether it's maybe around the around the whole team or uh on the ice or um on the bench maybe one-on-one -on -one sometimes but there's lots of different settings for that but uh ultimately i think uh, just getting that that feedback uh is a good thing and i think it it leads to less uh, gray area and then uh, you kind of get over it move on and go from there yeah, lots happening in Philadelphia right now. It goes without saying. Everybody's looking over their shoulder. They don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, with Danny Briere at the helm now as a GM there. I wanted to ask you about playing with rookie Austin Matthews, man. Like, that's such a cool, cool part of your career is some of the younger players that you played with at the beginning of this whole thing for the Maple Leafs. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, again, you see a, a few of those uh, core guys getting a chance to see them uh, kind of come up and uh, grow in their earlier years in Toronto. But, uh, Speaking specifically to, to Austin, I remember it was like a pre-World uh, Cup like skate with all the guys or whatever, and you could just tell right away that uh, he was he was different than uh, than a lot of guys you'll you'll see. Just the just kind of the the creativity that he had and uh, the skill level that he had, and it just seemed like whenever he went to go into a situation to get a puck back, whether it was a 50-50 or whatever it may be, he was always able to find a way to, to pull it out. It just seemed to stick to him at, at times. So, uh, yeah, he's obviously uh, gotten off to a great start uh, to his career. And uh, he's someone who definitely loves the game, loves the, the grind of working on your craft and things like that. So he's someone that seems to always be looking for uh, ways to get better. For sure. You know, we mentioned how you played in a couple of big markets, James, and Toronto being probably the biggest for, for anybody. What is it about Toronto that you, that you think, in your honest opinion, makes it difficult to win? Yeah, I think, um, again, like there's always, um, there's just always something going on. I would feel like as far as, again, like there's uh, people talking about different things and there's always kind of nothing gets uh nothing can kind of fly under the radar i would say so there is uh yeah. whether you're a goal scorer maybe you're going a few games without a goal like you have to <laughs> you're going to be hearing about that in a place like uh toronto or whatever so i think um just being able to manage those highs and lows especially in a place like that where there's going to be different things that come up and it seems uh when you're in it it seems like things are uh, things can be the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. So really managing that um, is, is so important. But uh, yeah, definitely there's that uh, extra element of uh, some of that attention um, and, and sometimes the pressure you may feel coming from that. I think for me personally, like I love that atmosphere of that. I, I grew up uh, a big Yankees fan and watching them and following them. And I feel like it's a similar comparison of uh, playing for the Leafs where you get that kind of uh, – 
it's not only just in the city, but everywhere you feel like is that the Leaf Nation and the following that you get is, is so huge. And um, there is a, a degree of, uh, you, you can feel that sometimes. And I think that makes it a lot of fun because again, when you're able to, if you're able to get a chance to win in a place like that, like obviously we all, uh, we all know how special something like that would be. So I think there is uh, the, the degree of pressure, but I think it's also that opportunity as far as uh, how, how special it would be to be able to accomplish something there. Yeah, personally, I feel that way when I venture out to King Street West on a Friday night, man. You just never know what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> as someone who was there at the beginning of this whole thing, as mentioned, um, do you follow this team at all anymore? Like, how stunned are you that they haven't been able to push through? Like, obviously, it's been a cra cra pretty crazy to break it down the last couple of years. And obviously, they get past the first round this year, but ultimately can't get to that Stanley Cup. Yeah, I, I think... Um with having a few of the good buddies that I have that are still there, like, uh, like, again, you, you can't help but follow, see how they're doing, see how the team's yeah. doing and stuff like that. I mean, I think the margin for error, especially when you get to the playoffs is just so small. And, um, it, it's, it, it's, again, you just got to keep sticking with it as far as, um, giving yourself a chance every year to be there. And sometimes the bounces go your way and sometimes they don't. Um, yeah, but, uh, Ultimately, I, th I feel like, again, just watching from afar, it seems like they're right there in, in uh, a lot of these uh, series. And, a lot, um, and, and I got a chance to advance this past year, so I, that was a, a step for them, which was uh, obviously probably pretty exciting. But ultimately, again, everyone's judged on uh, being able to, to make it all the way to the end. So uh, it definitely, uh, definitely make never a dull moment as far as watching and hearing some of the feedback and stuff like that <laughs> uh, as far as what – what could or should be done. So uh, it definitely makes it uh, entertaining in that way. So being at the at the lake this summer, doing your summer routine, I got to ask, do you have a, a training table out there, a masseuse? I hear you're like the Connor McDavid of, <laughs> of getting treatment at the rink. So are you are you missing that this summer or what? No, I've got, I've got my guys, uh, a couple a couple local guys, a couple guys that will come in and uh, just tune me up and things like that. But uh, like I mentioned before, like I love the – love what goes into trying to, to get better and maintain things and uh, want to play as long as I can. So I, I, again, I think uh, uh, at this uh, stage and age, I, I feel really good. Uh, I feel like relative to what other guys uh, were saying that were, that were my age. So I think a lot of that goes into the routine that I've been able to create um, over the, over the years and uh, definitely is something that has uh, served me well so far. So uh, yeah, it's uh, that, that part of it is, is definitely fun for me. Any interest in a Toronto reunion? The final question here. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we'll see what uh, see what happens. I think ultimately you want to be in a place where you're where you're wanted and stuff like that. Speaking just to my experience of uh, of being there last time, like it was it was amazing. It was unbelievable. Like something I'll always cherish, and I really really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, like going going off of that, that was all great. Obviously, again, in different stages of uh of your career and where you're at as a player you want it to again most importantly uh be a good fit uh, as far as how the organization and coaching staff and and how you fit in with all that stuff so um kind of we'll see what happens here in the next uh, couple weeks but like i've always said like my my experience uh playing in toronto was something i'll i'll always cherish and uh, something i'll always look back on super fondly and uh was definitely uh definitely something i really enjoyed well, uh, fantastic stuff, man. Again, I can't believe how long you've been in the league. I've been covering the league now for like 12 years. Like time just honestly flies, which is kind of scary. So enjoy this process. Obviously, it's got to be kind of exciting for your family over the next couple of weeks. We'll see what happens and uh, best of luck, man. Thanks for doing this. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Jeff.